Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Wargame. Today on Mudfight I have a 1v1, and the interesting thing is it's between it's between two twins. The guys uh, sent in the replay saying that they are about the same skill level and they both want to improve at the game. And particularly Rex would like some tips on how to handle fighting in the inf or fighting in the, the forest with his infantry or other units. Um, these guys are newer players, so there will be plays that you might think are horrendous choices. Things that you would do vastly different. But keep in mind, these people are open to improving. And they're sending their replay over to a channel that they probably know is going to get a lot of views. So it's um, it's not going to be helpful if you say, oh my god, this was painful to watch. Um, it's not going to be helpful at all because it'll just get your comment deleted by me. So make sure that whatever you write in the comment section is going to be helpful to either of these guys to help them improve the game. Because who knows, they could be on your team next, and you would probably like a competent teammate. Now, what we're seeing here is a lot of infantry transports being deployed by Rex. Um, already this is a bit of a red flag to me, because you don't really need this many transports. The only way that these amount of transports could see a purpose if this they were taking over the town over here. Which, again, you wouldn't really need that much infantry for. Now I'm going to be using the Epic Pen app again in my uh, commentary here. So if I were to take this town, I would want to have a, uh, let's say, uh, first a smaller pen. I would want to have a reconnaissance unit over there. So I can spot from here to about there, because this tree line over here is not going to be spotted. Then I want an ATGM infantry over there. And the ATGM infantry can, uh, let's say, attack from uh, this position to about, I think, here. And that's really all that you need. You just need one reconnaissance unit and the, the ATGM over there. Um, if you really want to, you can get some anti-air infantry, let's say over there at the X, to cover against either helicopter offensives or overflying planes. Beyond that, you don't really need anything. Because this area is just going to be covered by your ATGM and any vehicles pushing out of, let's say, the woods over here or uh, who are coming down the road this way, they're going to immediately receive ATGM fire, which is enough to dissuade most players to actively proceed with their current plan. Instead, what we're going to be seeing is a lot of transports from Rex. Bardelas all over the place, uh, a couple of uh, Zaglam and Aksarid. Oh, sorry, no, no Aksarid, the Aksarid... Where are they? The Israeli have access to the Aksarid, which is a fantastic transport. Especially in the woods, it can be very handy. Over here, slightly less so, because you don't really need all that armor in the open ground. So I would expect the Aksarid to be operating around here. Now, what else is he deploying? A couple of Anafa. Could be Shayatet 13. We've got the Siphon. And interestingly, a Siphon Pikud. It is destruction, by the way. Um, I pretty much never use a command helicopter. The reason is that you cannot hide these things. They're the only type of command unit that you cannot properly hide. Because an infantry vehicle or an infantry command can just be hidden in a forest. Even a tank, a command tank can be hidden in a forest. A command helicopter can't. So make sure that you don't bring a Saifan Pekud. Because they simply cannot be hidden very well. Over on the right flank... I am seeing a distinct lack of tanks and reconnaissance. Sure, he does have the Siphan over here, but that might not be enough. Because what you're going to see with the Siphan, especially if it's hovering over here, is very little. I would want to have, let me pause it here for a second, I would want to have uh, recon here. Probably another recon here as a sort of backup. I want to have recon here that then moves towards that side. And then I'd probably have a tank over here. It really depends on how I want to be pushing. If you don't want to be pushing over here in Foxtrot, you don't have to. It's a nice open area, which makes it pretty easy to defend. So I would have Recon over here, and uh, the H for the Hafiz, which is the high-end ATGM vehicle that the Israeli get over there. Hafiz has a high-end, quick ATGM, so they're harder to dodge. And this thing probably reaches, I think, about here. So again, anything that comes down the road or attacks through the open field over here is immediately going to get shot down. You don't really need a tank. If you want to, 
be pushing here, I would recommend a tank. And it does look like his uh, twin brother is planning on something like that. He has a V-Hor, a T-72S, a Strop, and an M84AN. So he does have a bit of everything. Recon, tanks, um, anti-air, and reconnaissance. And, of course, this reconnaissance unit is going to be easier to hide than this one, or than um, the M84AN. What's happening over on the other side of the flank, on the other side of the map, is problematic. Because over here he runs into Polytech. And Polytech's vehicles are... Well, first of all, this, most of their vehicles are offloaded. On top of that, you're fighting auto cannons with machine guns. That's not a, a good fight. That's not a fight that you want to take. Moreover, all of the infantry over here is dropped off at the same point. One big bombing run, uh, and everything's gone. So if you have a situation like this, where uh, you know that the enemy's coming down the road, and they actually have the town already, just try and spread out. So I would send part of my group that way, and part of my group that way, to make sure that not everything's going to get bombed at the same time. And ideally then, you just fall back. Because, well, charging head-on into this town is not going to work, especially since there's also a Moderna out there. So that's a big gun, plus an autocannon. And there's a Strop 1, which by its nature is an anti-air unit, but, well, ask an infantryman who stood right in front of it when it started firing, uh, in war game that is, and you're going to find that that infantryman might soon not be there. So very, very dangerous, and what... Uh, he should have done if he really wanted to get this position is sent the Anafas over there. If I wanted to take this town, if I really wanted to take this town, I would send in my helicopter forces here first. They capture the buildings. So let's say that they capture uh, these building blocks over here. Then I have a couple of my motorized vehicles come up and I would place an HGM down there. Then I would swap these things around. So my security force of Shia Tet 13 is going to be in the building slightly farther back. The HGM is farther front. And ideally a reconnaissance unit over there is going to be spotting for the HGM. And making sure that anything that gets lit up is immediately going to get fired at. The way that he's doing it now, charging in with HGM or sorry, with machine gun vehicles and uh, reservists of all people, Miluim. Yeah, well, he has a, a, big, a bit of everything. Uh, Miluim, Barkan, Masaya Ad. Yeah, it's a bit of everything. But it's just not facing any chance of getting there. Over here, we got Shaitet 13 in the woods. Another group here. If you see a large concentration like the one over here, you have a pretty decent chance that this is the whole contingency that's going towards the forest. So in that case, I would probably try and push these guys around as quickly as possible. Uh, you could even offload them from the Anafa, let's say at this point, at the H. Because from there you can start to ambush units as they're coming into these woods, if at all. Right now, with uh, this group of Shaitet and this one over here, you stand absolutely no chance at killing off these guys. Just none. It's not going to work. So. In this situation, I would just try to either fall back or preemptively, so before this whole situation started going sideways, I would try and capture this town with a bunch of helicopters. Now, interestingly, Rex might actually be able to take this position because most of the vehicles out here are falling back. Now the Shai Tet are trying to intercept. They're doing a decent job at it. They're killing off some vehicles, engaging infantry, but now the Strop starts to fire. And the Vidra too. And the Proletari. And the AGS. And soon there will not be any Shaitet. So be very, very careful here. This was going to be doomed right from the start. Shaitet are great infantry, but not against immensely overwhelming numbers like that. Now the transports are mostly dead, the Bertelas. And that leaves the infantry in a tricky spot, as they now have to traverse open terrain to get to the buildings. Uh, what's worse, you might have a few too many buildings for the people to get here. Uh, that just sorted itself out. You got the Rovahit, the Miluim, and the Rovahit again. But they're just not going to get there. Okay, we got a bombing run coming in. That did wipe out a decent number. But still, it's not enough. 
Something else that I'm not seeing, and I'm not sure what their income levels were, is more reinforcements. If you're going to go for a full hour and 4,500 points for destruction, I would just try to keep a trickle of reinforcements coming in. Don't keep spying infantry, it's not going to work. Keep a mixed blend of units. So you'd have, let's say, over here, uh, another HGM unit moving to reinforce. You'd have a tank over here moving to reinforce. You'd have maybe an AA unit over there, which is going to be capable of helping, well, let's say, deter enemy units. Polytech is doing it. He's bringing in another Moderna. Uh, the first Moderna... Here it is. This one is still here. Situation on the right. I think that Rex got so sidetracked with the battle on the left that he completely forgot about his forces on the right. And that leaves these Anafas with their infantry still packed up. Now, since I'm not going to go through the kill list, I'm going to switch from one view to the next. Look at what he can see. This is Polytech's information, so let's rotate the cam and uh, you can see which side we're looking from. The guys over here can see the Anafa, they can see all the transports, they can see the Miluim, they can see the Siphon. In reverse, nothing. Wargame is definitely, in part, a game that's about information. Whoever has the most information wins the match. Because that's the person who can control the engagement. They can control when they fight, who they fight, and what units they bring to further their cause. So in this case, if you know that there are a lot of units out here, uh, you don't know that even not all of them are inside of a building, you could go for an airstrike. Or you could argue, hold on, if everything's out here, then what's out here? If... And in this case, I'm speaking for Polly. If uh, Rex has all these units out here in the town, then how much did he actually send over here? And it might not be a whole lot. So in this case, I would actually encourage Polly to be more aggressive. He knows that uh, Rex already lost a lot of units over here. He knows that he's 425 for 155. So somewhere he lost a lot of points. That was over on the right. What does he have on the left? How many points did he invest? Let's say that these guys started out with a total of a thousand starting points, which I think is about right, considering the amount of points that we have seen on the field, the amount of points that we have seen lost. Of course, you're going to have a bit of an uptick in points as the game progresses. You're going to have more points, or at least more points to spend. In this situation, that means that Polly has, let's say, about 300 f points v uh, value more than Rex. And if you then also see a cluster of units over here, then you could be pretty aggressive. Now, one thing about the Siphon over here, if you click on a unit and you press Z, the helicopter is going to switch from hovering low to hovering high. And when it hovers high, it can see a whole lot more. But again, information here is critical. Uh, Rex is bringing in another reconnaissance unit, but he should have done that a, well quite a while ago. You need more reconnaissance on this flank. This is looking very, very dark. The Maglan that he's bringing in are a great choice for recon. Uh, put those over here. Because from here you can sort of see the road coming, or whatever's coming down the road. And you can have a look at the field and potentially spot units on the edge of the forest here. Especially T-72S, poor stealth, it's not going to be that easy or not, not difficult to spot. Okay, over here, we got the Shia Tet, whatever's left of them, engaging with Modestrelchi. He's doing another... Nope. He's doing another random bombing run. I'm now asking the question, what does he want to bomb? In this case, he knows for certain that the Modestrelchi are here. He knows for certain that these guys are in position because they're actively engaging with the Modestrelchi, with the, the Shia Tet. But this spot... Is there anything in there? Is that empty? Is that full of units? Is that full of tanks? And if so, then a La Vie, that would, it wouldn't really be the right choice. I would always go for the, the targets that I can see. So this box right here. Probably uh, aim it right about there. Because if you do that, then you're going to be bombing, let's say, a bit of this tree line here. Just about here. And this is cover for people. So they're always going to be using this terrain, especially if you know that they're pushing you out with the Shai Tet over there. I think that if you bomb pretty much here, 
you're going to be getting the Mostrelchi. You might get the Strop if you're lucky. And the Granato Mets will probably also go down. Or at least take a pretty big beating. Now, let's see what else is he bringing in. A Hammer. That's another ATGM vehicle. Um, <clears throat> I really wonder where this one's going to go. Because the Hammer is... It's a nice little vehicle that is capable of dishing out quite a lot of damage for just 35 points. But it does need reconnaissance. And if you don't have a spotter for that Hammer, it's not going to be very valuable. You got a Schnauf, you got a Command Infantry, where's that going? There's not really that many spots where it can go, so it's probably heading over here. That's not a bad choice, but... I wonder if he can see it coming with the uh, Reconnaissance Infantry over here. Yep, bingo. A single, low-ranking transport that spits out something that has just five people, a five-man squad. You can sort of see it over here. And that suddenly flips the zone. That is just a big marker saying, shoot me now. And there we go, the Hapak have been detected and identified. So it's only a matter of time before he gets detected. If you want to get into this sector, um, first of all, you can ask yourself, is it really worth it? Do I really need to bring a command infantry in right now? Um, arguably, yes. Because the risk at this point is that Polytech, with more sectors under his command, and more points ahead, is going to be snowballing. So he's going to be getting more units, and because your position is already weakened, <clears throat> You're going to have a, a harder time trying to push back. So arguably, yes, this was a, an interesting calculated chance, but then please put it over here. This tree line, I believe, does count as concealment. Yeah, dense hedged farmland. So this spot right here, concealment. This spot right here, death. Because it's just a matter of time before either a mortar starts firing, a tank comes out of the woods, a bombing run commences. Lots of things can happen. Now he's once again coming in with airstrikes. But where and why? Okay. An airstrike for me is um, most of the time the same thing as an artillery strike. You want to use it to either soften up an enemy. You want to make sure that an area is more accessible by stunning an enemy unit. Or you know that there's a high value target there and you want to kill it. In this case, the latter could be an interesting explanation because you could be trying to find, with a random bombing run, the command infantry. It's risky, however, how deep he went with that bomber because the bomber, I think, dropped its bombs pretty much on this spot right here. It came in and from here it drops and then it evacs that way. And when it does that, it leaves it vulnerable to anti-air that's, let's say, in this position here, there... And, well, everything between it, everything in this line could be shooting at it. So that makes it very, very risky. A La V is not a, a throwaway bomber. It's an expensive jet. And you want that thing to survive. Now, if he was going to be fishing for a command unit, then that could have been an explanation. If he was just doing a random bombing run, hoping to get points that way, then it was a poor use of force. Because that way, you don't get points. If you want to be pushing into this area... Hold your bombers. Just don't send the bombers out at all. Get more forces. Wait and see what is going to be happening. And only then, when you have forces, which are ready to start pushing. And you say, let's say you have uh, Shayetet over here pushing towards the Proletary or pushing towards the Mothestrelchi. Then you know where they are. And then you send an airstrike here and there. And that means that your infantry and vehicles are going to have an easier time pushing into that territory. There's another Anafa coming in. Or two and a half as in fact. Yeah. I looked at the replay before the video happened. And I saw uh, an incident that I didn't quite catch this time around. This dead unit over here is a Hafiz. That's one of those high-end HGM units. It's a great anti-tank hunter. It's also expensive. I believe it's 110 points. 
it has no business being here. What was happening is that the units were transitioning from a spot from here towards, <clears throat> I think, the other line. But they got detected over here. And the conquerors unit right there immediately wiped them out. So if you have a high-end HGM unit, or let's say any HGM unit at all, make sure that it is um, in concealment, that it has cover and it has a spotter. The Hamer over here can uh, do some HGM unit damage. But this is <clears throat> a bit of a side note. This is pretty risky. What's going to happen here is that either the tank or the Hamer will target something. Let's say it's the Hamer. If the Hamer fires an HGM that way, it's also an indicator saying, hey, this is where I am, right there. So somebody with mortars could immediately target this position, which would not only damage the Hamer, but also the Merkava 2B. It wouldn't damage it severely, because it's a tank, it has a fair amount of armor, but it would definitely take stun damage. Now, MiG-29 912A comes in. That's one of those napalm, uh, or, well, sort of napalm jets. It first hits with HE and then blows up into napalm. Rov-8 are down. Look at that. That is a good use of an airstrike. This is the distinct difference between the airstrike that Rex sent in and that Polly is now using. Polly opened up this building over here. He pretty much made it inaccessible to Blue 4. Killing off anybody who's in there. Now he's putting up smoke. Oh, this is beautiful. He's putting up smoke. The Rovait over here are just so low that they probably cannot even do anything against these guys. Infantry is going to come out of the M80A, and the M80A would probably either back off and use autocannons for longer range support, or maybe even circle around and try and target the Rovait from a different angle. Can Rex see them? Now he can see something's happening. But he has nothing to stop it. In a situation like this, and I've uh, already mentioned it, um, an HGM unit and a recon unit would have probably done quite well. Especially if your recon was over here. Normally the recon unit over here would just see the guys coming down the road and not be able to do anything about it. But the Israeli have Maglan. And the Maglan are capable of immediately wiping out one of these transports. It's one shot, one kill with the HGM, and they can do that, I think, what is it, five times? Four times, Spike MR. So by doing that, they would very quickly get rid of some of these transports, meaning that he might have had a little bit more time to reinforce this position, or to now call in an airstrike. And there it comes. That's one Lavi. And the second Lavi. I do like that he's pushing these bombers out to slightly different positions. That's well done to Rex. So he wiped out quite a lot of the proletariat. Unfortunately, some of them are already in a building or just outside the range of the airstrike. Oh, this is risky. I understand that he wants to try and defeat the enemy rush. But you're pushing into an area where you don't really have any kind of reconnaissance. Yeah, you know there is a tank. But you don't know what kind of tank. You need more reconnaissance. If Rex is going to take one thing away from Wargame, it's the, or from this replay, from this video, it's going to be that he has to bring a lot more reconnaissance. Because this Merkava is blind. It can shoot, it can do damage, but it... Oh, there we go. It finally realized what it's shooting at. But you don't know what the rest is. You don't know how many of them there are. And for this uh, Moderna right here, it's a pretty easy way to fall back. You can just reverse. And ideally just reverse and then go sideways. This Merkava is going to have to, if it wants to disengage, go all the way back to this tree line. And that tree line is not even a guarantee that he's going to be safe. Whereas this forest will protect the Moderna if it's behind it right there. So make sure that you have some sort of concealment for your tank. And if you don't have any, you can always bring a mortar and set up a smoke screen. The way that um, Polly did it a while ago with the attack over here. Polly, by the way, yeah, he has the M84AN. But he could also do with a bit more reconnaissance. The spot where the proletary 90 are, that's where I would want to have reconnaissance. Now, and again, uh, keep this in mind. It is very easy for me to just point out everything that I would do different. When I'm actually playing, I still make plenty of mistakes. Because 
you're trying to do a lot of stuff at the same time and you're bound to make mistakes. You're bound to not see things that you can see in hindsight because you're, well, you're facing the pressure of the battle. I could just pause the battle and have a look at what's happening here and then have a look at what's happening over there. He doesn't have that luxury. He has to be fighting the battle. So in this case, Rex would probably be going, oh crap, now I'm getting attacked here by a Strop? Oh, okay. Uh, I had plans over here. I have units going down that road. What am I Tsefa doing? What am I Shai Ted doing? Are they encountering anything? You just have so many plates spinning that it's very hard to constantly pay attention to everything. Now the Strop did do a bit of damage, and that was to the Siphon. So reconnaissance here is gone. With the exception of the Maglan. Reconnaissance for Polly is the Hera, the MD4 AN, and another reconnaissance squad that's coming in. The Vihor is now able to start taking shots over here. Oh no. Rex, where are you going? What's with the, the march of the transports? Look at this, this is just a butchery. It is destruction. He's sacrificing a lot of points. Feels like he's given up at this point. These guys stand no chance at all. They might kill a Tatra, but I'm, even that I'm questioning. I think he sort of reached the point of screw this game. Because my twin brother at this point is 900 points ahead, so screw it. I do wonder what he's going to do next. Sends in the Kurnus, seat plane. Make turn 912 has been detected coming in. Or maybe not detected yet, but it is coming in. Okay. If you're sending in a seat aircraft, it's always recommended to bring in a seat and a bomber slightly behind it. Because the P or well the al the alternative is also an, an interesting option. So you first bring in the bomber and then the seed aircraft. Because if somebody sees the bomber, they might turn on something like this, like the cub. Unfortunately, it is out of missiles, so it's not capable of doing anything, and that means that it's automatically turning its radar off. But if you see the seed aircraft first, people are going to likely turn off their anti-air. If they see the bomber first, they might go, oh bomber, anti-air on. And then the seed comes in and kills it. Potentially even before the bomber gets over that area. Now what's happening over here? Maglans are engaging... Oh, oh. Polly's on the run again. I do wonder where all of these transports have come from. Because I'm not really seeing the infantry that came out of it. Some granatomats here. Granikari. And your Shayatet are really not equipped for this. This is why you would want to have a tank out in this section. Oh, hold on. I thought these were all empty transports, but they're not. They're all... Well, they were full. This is the moment when you bring in the lovey. This can be shut down with one good bombing run. Does he have a fighter up? Mm, sort of. This will not likely kill a lovey that's flying over. Decent push over here. Um, tank support as well. He has one strop for anti air and uh, silo four or silos for anti air. So helicopters wouldn't stop him either. No. Don't counter an attack like this with more infantry. If this was my situation and somebody had just taken, to my knowledge, full control of this forest. I would not want to send in infantry. <clears throat> I would want to send in a bit of infantry and capture this building. And I would try and contain the situation. So zooming out a bit more. Uh, infantry here just to stop them. And potentially a tank over here. To make sure that anything that comes out of the forest from here to there is going to get shot at. And beyond that just try to contain, uh, try to contain them. And if you still have a lot of V on standby just do a bombing run right there. You might get a few points, and it's not so much to inflict serious amounts of points damage, but just to stun or weaken enemy units and dissuade the opponent from coming in closer. Here comes the Lavi, good run. 
a bit too far. The idea was good, but the execution could have been slightly better by hitting them slightly further here. Because you know that they were here a moment ago. But they're not going to be there by the time that your bird gets there. They all have moved on. So try to bomb a little bit further, let's say, into the future. And try to expect where those units are going to be heading next. Outside of that, good bombing run. Because you did slow them down. Some of the motor strategy have died. Uh, a transport or two, I think. One of the anti-air infantry went down. Where are you going? Drop off. Drop off. There you go. He's reinforcing his town. But you still don't know against what. <clears throat> more reconnaissance. I'll say again, more reconnaissance. Over here he's pushing with two Merkava 3s. Rex. <clears throat> you don't know what you're fighting. Be careful. It's 10 points. Merkava takes a hit from the Hamer. It's just an Ito, but it hurts nonetheless. Moderna, see, is doing exactly what I had mentioned. It's falling back to behind this tree line over here. And by doing that, it just broke line of sight. Your Merkava cannot do anything. Well, sure, it can keep engaging, but it's a different tank. You're now trying to kill an M84. Uh, you need recon. What's this mortar going to do? Smoke? Yep. Beautiful. He's a bit, a bit late, but definitely the right idea. Because what Polly is doing over here <clears throat> is just breaking line of sight between the Merkava and whatever else is out there. If you put up a smoke wall like this, the Merkavas can only see till that smoke wall. And all the units behind, like the M84AN and the Moderna, which have taken some damage, they get a chance to heal up. They get repaired. This is not a good idea. Sending in the Tsefa E and hoping for the best. It's only armed with rocket pods anyway. Sure, you might catch the mortar, but that's only because the strop has... I don't know, different plans. There we go, now the strop is engaging. Tsefa taking fire. Lots of fire. Stunned. Strop reloads. Look at that. Oh, actually, is he inside of the smoke or just in front of it? I think he's just in front of it. Can Polly still see him? Oh, yeah. And Rex can't see shit. La Vie comes in. Well done to Polly for getting the strop away from the position from where it was firing. Because the firing position was here. And then he moved the vehicle right back after he fired it. And now it's over here. And that means that it's less susceptible to getting bombed. Well done. Two Anafa coming in with reconnaissance. I applaud your use of reconnaissance, but not at the same time. See, the Maglans immediately light up the Moderna. And immediately proceed to miss as they're being forced to move. Oh no. That was four of the Maglan gone. You just made it into cover there. That Moderna was ready to shoot again. No, don't sacrifice the Anafa. It's not worth it. You don't have anything to take down this drop. Don't do it. And they cannot... Can even see the Motor Strelchi. They can. They can also see this drop. If this had been a drop too, he'd be gone. Maglans take out the infantry. What I'm kind of not seeing yet, but was expecting to see, is an ATGM vehicle or an ATGM plane taking out that uh, Mark of a 3. Because it is a very dangerous tank. And you'd want that dead as quickly as possible. Over here, Rex is positioned with a Mark of a 2B up on the ridge. And he knows exactly where he is. Polly, that is. Yeah, if you walk out with one thing from this replay, again, more reconnaissance. You need to know what the enemy is doing. You need to know what they have coming in, what their plan is, what their intent is, um, what sort of counter you're going to need to bring. Mm. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't. No, okay. He's going for it. The Bez Meshupar fighter. 170 points. Really expensive jet. Goes after this one. It didn't get the kill. Uh, it's now going to be forced to fly more or less over this drop, depending on which way it's going to veer off. It's also going to fly over the silo, so it's going to take missiles regardless. This right here is not a threat. It might look like a threat, but the Mi-25 S-24 is really only a threat versus infantry. And that's because of the S-24B. The flight time missile is piss poor in accuracy and it has very little armor piercing capability. It is just not very deadly. You're using a 170 point plane against a potential 75 point reward and flying the Meshupar into an area that you do not know is safe. By doing, though, by doing that you're really risking this jet because it could get shot down pretty easily um, if you just zoom out a little bit and of course uh, Rex didn't know this. There's a Kub, there's a Strop, that he knows of. There's anti infantry or anti air infantry here. I wouldn't be surprised to see this Meshupar go down, depending on how quick Polly is on the draw of the Kub M4. This guy is really only a threat to infantry. It won't attack the town, not by itself. So that means that it would go for the Shy Ted. Well, I wouldn't send in a 170 point plane against a 70, what, 75 point helo anyway. Uh, much less if there was just one Shy Ted remaining. It is not worth the trade off. The helicopter could also go for the Maglan, but the Maglan can just retreat deeper into the forest. And they still have the Gilon and. Um, sorry, what's that? Uh, the Glilon and the Negev. So they can still put out a lot of damage against that helicopter if it happens to fly over. Taking a jet to strafe a helicopter, not recommended. Meshupar takes a hit from the anti air infantry. La Vie comes in. Bombs the general area of the strop. He saw that coming, I think, and moved the strop further away. Always keep the enemy guessing. Good play to Polytech there. Oh boy. You could almost think that Polly is planning an attack. Three M91, sorry, four M91 Vihor. And a whole bunch of T-72S. This is going to be risky. This is going to be risky. I'm not even sure how he got 4 Vihor, by the way. Looks like he's playing with a mod of some sort. I think he can only get 3 Vihor. Because he is playing with a combined deck. He's playing with the... What is that? The Entente, I think. He's also on the move here. Could have done that a long time ago, actually. Because that Merkov is pretty blind. Look at that. Look at how much is actually crossing over. Infantry, infantry there, vehicles here. And that's what Rex sees. Now he can spot the infantry. But there's HGMs flying all around this Merkov. And by some miracle it has survived. But not by much. There we go. Kill. 15 points. And now the Hapak are engaging the Granikari. Which is really only going to ever end one way. Now, Rex, something else that you can try. Especially since I know that you have Maglands in helicopters. Is to fly one helicopter right to the map edge. Fly along the map edge. And come out on this side. And try to drop off your infantry either here or, let's say, there. Do not fly too close to Bravo, because he'll know that you're there. But if you just have one Maglan unit that's coming in here, or that's, let's say, spotting from, I don't know, this position or there, you probably could have seen that parade of tanks come in. And if you know that the enemy is bringing in a lot of tanks, you can expect that there's going to be push over here at some point. So that means that you're going to need more anti-tank vehicles. You need more anti-tank units. 
you're going to need quite a lot more firepower in order to stop all of those things. So you could also be saving up for, let's say, an anti-tank plane. Now, seeing how he does have the Messiah Arts, but I still haven't seen a single long-range ATGM unit, with the exception of the Maglans, I'm actually thinking that he might not have the units in his deck. And that's weird. Because the ATGM units for Israel are some of the best in the game. That spike, the spike LR, is fast, accurate, and deadly. And those are things that you really want out of a missile. What I do really like, by the way, and this is a lot of thing, or this is something that uh, quite a few players don't do: picket lines. He has an M325 over there and a Siphon over there, which means that anything that tries to flank him is going to get detected. But he cannot really. Um, I can not really be surprised down here, but he can be through here. If enemy recon unit just drove up to here, there's still a gap. So ideally, just use the uh, M325 from the infantry from there, park it here. If the thing dies, you will temporarily get a notification, hey, your unit died. And you can see if your picket line is still intact. Kernus flies in, trying to get NTR vehicles killed. But everything is infrared. No, 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 no. Get it out of here, Rex. Quick. Yeah, he's leaving. Maglans. Um, pretty poor use of the Maglans here. Maglans are great infantry units for reconnaissance jobs. Spotters. You could almost consider them assassins. They snipe high-value targets. If you see something like a Strop, it's not really a high-value target. If you see a Kub M4 drive by, that's a high-value target. That's when you enable the ATGM and take it down. By not doing that, and by using them as a direct line, you're throwing away 35 points. Because they're only, at best, a five-man squad. And they're just very easy to kill off. Especially for something like a Moderna. Dead. Although I think the kill might have gone to uh, the OT. More Merkavas coming in. The game is pretty much over at this point. I'm ready for AN falling back. Can you see that? Rex. Nope. Oh dear. Smoke screens galore. No, 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 no. Don't be pushing in with tanks. Not without reconnaissance. Not if you have no idea what's in that town. The last thing that we know from this town is that there were Padobranchi in there. Padobranchi 90. Whoops. Those guys have a very dangerous anti-tank weapon. Oh, sorry, Proletary 90, not Padobranchi. Proletary. Still, it is 24 AP. If you get too close, you're going to pay the price. Merkava 3 over here taking fire from 3 T-72S. Getting too close to the tree line. There goes one Merc. And here comes the parade. Look at all that. That is not something that you really want to see. Four v horse pushing through the road. I think at this point he just pretty much quit. Because it's not time and it's not points. All right, lots of takeaways from this video. Most important one, bring reconnaissance. Bring information gathering units because you need to know what the enemy's bringing. If you know that, then you can decide if you want to fight them, where they're likely gonna go, how many there are, and what's your counter going to be. That's, I would say, the most important thing that Rex needs to change right now, more reconnaissance. Second, bring HGM units in this deck. The Messiah Ots are good against fighting infantry, but they're not very good at stopping vehicles. So HGM infantry at the positions where I pointed them out previous, those would have stopped quite a few of the offenses or offensives that uh, Polly sent out. Anyway, I'm gonna now hand over the uh, let's say the the chat the comment section to you. What do you think, guys? Think that Rex and or Politech could have done different and better? Again. I'll warn you, no stuff that's saying, oh my god, this was painful to watch. 
these are beginners, but they're also guys who are willing to send in a comment or sending the, the replay. And they know that they're going to take shit in the comment section. They know it's going to be painful to read. Um, but they're willing to learn. And I'm always willing to support people who are willing to put themselves out there to learn. So constructive commentary only. Constructive things that he could have been doing different. Uh, maybe not so much write an essay, just one or two points in a short paragraph, I think is the most helpful way to, uh, for you to help these guys. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Polly and Rex, keep at it. And if you have another replay, let's say in a, a couple months, then do send it in. Because I'd like to see how you guys have progressed since then. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you soon for the next video.